Hello everyone. Thanks for checking out my video. Today I want to talk about a sore spot in automotive design, and that would be the user interface. So here we have a mock-up of a possible solution. In short, it's a highly intuitive interface located entirely within the heads-up display. This solution dramatically improves the safety and usability of the UI. And I have to point out, this thing is not a gimmick. It's been thoroughly thought out and it actually works. In this video, I'm only going to give you a quick overview of a few features. You can see a lot more in my other videos, so be sure to check those out. So first of all, what is it? Well, it's very simple. This is a user interface for cars where the majority of the system is located on the windshield within the heads-up display. Basically, we've moved everything from a little screen on your dashboard up onto your windshield. One important thing to note, for the driver, this interface looks like it's about 10 feet ahead of the windshield. All heads-up displays work this way, and it's one of the most important aspects of the system. The reason is because the system was designed to keep the driver's sight line pointed ahead at the road and not require them to change their focus when using the interface. After all, it doesn't matter how high you put a little screen on your dashboard, if you have to change your focus, you can't really see what's happening on the road. With the user interface seemingly 10 feet ahead of the vehicle, the driver's focus barely needs to be adjusted. So how does it work? The user controls the interface through a series of touchpads. There are two on the steering wheel, one on each arm, and one on the center console in between the driver and the front passenger. All of these touchpads have a consistent, familiar UI. The touchpads on the steering wheel are reversible, which means the system can cater to both right-handed and left-handed users. The center touchpad can be used while the car is in autonomous mode. It also serves as a means for the passenger to operate the UI. In that scenario, the system can detect which side the user's hand is coming from and deploy the dock on that side of the windshield without inadvertently distracting the driver. The center touchpad also serves as a secondary user interface. It can display the same user interface as what's on the windshield, but its main purpose is to handle the more complex operations which aren't best suited for the windshield. In practice, these touchpads work a lot like a trackpad on a laptop. The main difference is these touchpads are fully functioning, high-resolution displays. The main benefit of using touchpads is that you don't need to look at them when you use them. This is extremely important when you're driving. So here we have the other touchpad which handles some of the settings like the volume and the track. It can be customized to display between one and three settings at a time. The user just slides their finger across the touchpad to control the setting. In this case, the volume. A visual is displayed on the windshield as well. They can also slide their finger up and down to toggle through the other appropriate settings. Notice how the icon on the windshield changes. The next feature is augmented reality navigation. This system uses the heads-up display to paint a virtual path onto the road. The driver just needs to follow that line. It's really simple. This is a far cry from existing systems which require the driver to look at a map and determine their orientation. It lets the driver focus on driving and nothing else. All they need to do is follow the lines. It couldn't be any easier. Augmented reality also improves other aspects of the navigation experience. For example, you can use virtual pins or other types of markers to indicate the destination or where to turn. You can also make the street names much more visible. Current systems either need to be magnified significantly before they even show the street names, or they're so small that they're hard to see. The bottom line is that augmented reality needs to be incorporated into navigation systems. It's the safest and most effective solution. There's no excuse at this point. The technology's there. It needs to happen now. The next feature is the radar view. The radar view is a 360 degree representation of all objects within a certain distance of the car. As the name implies, the graphical appearance closely resembles that of a typical radar display. This layout allows a driver to assess his or her surroundings without taking their eyes off the road. It also presents the driver with much more precise information about objects in their surroundings. And this system's really easy to use. In this example, when the dots turn red, that means you can't change lanes. Also, this feature actually solves the problem of blind spots as well. Next, we have danger illumination. Danger Illumination is an active warning system that alerts the driver of any objects that are directly in or within a certain distance of the vehicle's forward path. 
This system can illuminate an object, pointing it out to the driver. All existing systems rely on imprecise beeps, flashing lights, or written messages to alert the driver of potential danger. Danger illumination is unique in that it'll track an object and direct your attention to it. The next feature is the car simulator. The car simulator is an enthusiast feature designed to simulate the driving dynamics of other cars. It takes advantage of the highly programmable nature of modern electric vehicles and configures aspects of the driving experience such as steering, suspension, acceleration, and sound to mimic those of other cars. In short, this feature makes your car drive and sound like any car you want. For example, you can make your car accurately simulate a BMW M5 simply by pressing a button. This is an extremely powerful feature and may end up attracting buyers that never before considered electric vehicles. It's also something that will bring a lot more enjoyment to the driving experience. I want to quickly jump right into some demonstrations. Unfortunately, these demos are limited to animating the sound and virtual gauges only. So first, we have the Tesla Model S under heavy acceleration without any sound effects added. The stage is simple because no, you just stage, you go. God, <laughs> damn it, that motherfucker accelerate. Here, we have the exact same Model S with some sound effects added. The stage is simple because you're using the roll. Oh, yeah. And here, we have another version. As you can see, sound makes a big difference. Now let's look at the gauges on the windshield. So first, we're going to demonstrate a Ford Mustang with its iconic 5 liter V8. Next, we have the Ferrari 458 with its high revving, naturally aspirated V8. You can even do some crazy stuff like this. Make sure to check out the car simulator video for more information on this feature. So as you can see, this feature can really enhance the driving experience. You can really have a lot of fun with this feature, and I'm sure people will come up with some great ideas. Finally, we wanted to address the problem of entering information. The goal was to come up with a safe and easy way to enter information, either while stopped or driving. This was a hard problem to solve, and a controversial one at that. The key was coming up with a way to enter information without having to look away from the road. Fortunately, we came up with two great solutions, and both are incredibly effective. The first solution is to use handwriting. This might seem a little old-fashioned because it never really worked out in the realm of personal computing. However, when you're in a car and you can't look at your keyboard, all of a sudden it makes a lot more sense. And that's really the key. You don't need to look at the surface you're writing on. This is a unique feature of handwriting, and it already exists in some cars today. Any of the three touchpads can be used to write on. The software is extremely intelligent, and it memorizes the driver's writing style. It begins to recognize characters faster the more you use it. It also has great predictive results for addresses and points of interest. As you can see here, the predictive results are listed to the right, and here we can view them. Everything just works. The second solution is voice recognition. Now before you jump up and start debating this one, let me first say that this system is not like anything you've seen before in cars. So to that point, I would absolutely agree that all existing systems are inadequate. What makes this system different is that it uses small cameras to analyze the movements of the driver's mouth and matches that with the audible recordings of their voice. This allows it to have incredibly precise comprehension of who is speaking and what they're saying. This remains true even if there are other people talking or there's background noise. So as you can see, the problem of data entry has been resolved with two very effective solutions.